Once again, we want to welcome you all to our webinar workshop this Friday morning. We appreciate you waking up and spending just a small part of your day with us. My name is Brian Griffin, a marketing assistant here at Messer Financial Group. Uh, many of you are already familiar with Messer Financial, but in case you do not know, we are an FMO located in Mint Hill, North Carolina. We started with just two agents and we are now serving 20,000 plus agents across 40 states. And thank goodness we are still growing. So when working with seniors the way that we do, uh, many times the only technology we use is our phones. But many times we're underestimating the impact that social media has on those in our business demographic. So bottom line is seniors do love Facebook. Facebook is no longer the go-to social media site for kids. It's now a way for families to connect. And not only that, but also for agents like yourself to build brands. So today our very own Mike Brazel will show us the power of Facebook and the importance of building your own brand. Now Mike, he is a regional manager with Messer, but first he was an agent for several years building a successful book of business. And he's used these exact same techniques he's about to show you to grow his business and all without buying leads. So before we get started, a few housekeeping rules. We're going to hold all questions until the end of his presentation. If you do have questions, just type in the box on the right hand side of your screen and we'll get to as many as we can at the conclusion of the presentation. So now without any further delay, Mr. Mike Brazel. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate it. And we'll welcome everybody. I um, hope everybody is doing well at your home uh, new confinement or whatever the proper terminology is. Um, as Brian mentioned, you know, I, I'm newer with Messer, but I've been in this business for about uh, 10 years. I've been with Messer for seven of those and have just, as an agent, you know, just was the one company that seemed to take care of us. Um, what I, you know, what I learned about Messer when I started here was a, a, a little about culture that I didn't understand. And it's a word that gets thrown around a lot, but once you've been exposed to Messer in a personal sense, and th those people that have been to the what we call the Top Producer Summit or the Chairman's Council uh, trips that some of our our top producers go on, you, you just see how much Messer loves and people love us back. So it's just an it's an awesome place to work. And 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 then I got here and I started to learn about what Messer does for agents, you know. So um, where and I didn't use leads, but you know here Messer you can get get free leads and earn more free leads you know you get um to qualify for some trips you can even qualify for free you e know free a hip um uh you know in a time like now when we're working at home and we're doing things just like this um the ability to enroll online is really important so we have our own proprietary enrollment software and office in a box that give you all the tools that you need to do that and um you know it, to top all of that off you have the ability to earn health insurance, a retirement contribution, and even ownership in Messer, and I just think that's amazing. So, um, and and they're providing this type of content to to help agents improve. And one, you know, one of the statistics that always has blown me away is that the average um, Medicare agent in the United States sells about 12 policies a year. Um, I don't know why you do this business for that, but that's okay. Um, uh, Messer's average agent writes about four times that. So we'll, let's get into Facebook a little bit, and um, we'll um, kind of work through this. And this is kind of a one-on-one -on -one class. This is just an intro to Facebook, kind of like best behaviors, how to build, build a business page, um, and really the power behind your personal page. But first, you know, why, why do we want um, to uh, do – to use Facebook. And, um, you know, here's some statistics that most people really don't know. Um, Facebook reaches more than 60% of internet users. Um, it's the second most used platform next to YouTube. I would have thought Google would have been ahead of that, but it's not. Um, almost half of adults get their news from Facebook. I don't know if that's good or bad, um, but that's where people go to look for things. 50% uh, of buyers, it's not necessarily a Facebook s statistic, but um, this is a, a general sales per, a statistic, I'm sorry. 50% uh, of buyers uh, consume three to five pieces of content, in other words, see articles, ads, whatever, before purchasing or contacting a salesperson. I think that's important. 
and then in, in our particular business, seniors are the most active demographic on Facebook. So yeah, Facebook, that's why Facebook in our particular business, I think that's the most important thing. And the reason that seniors are on Facebook is it's because it's where they can see their kids. It's where they can see their grandkids. You know, uh, they, they can Facebook stalk them. You know, they can be part of their life and, and, and not have to, you know, interrupt the busy kids that won't answer their phone or re respond to text messages or anything like that. Um, in, in, in working with Facebook, and I'm going to pull up my page, so I hope nobody's gotten crazy on there today. Um, yeah, this is my, my wife and I right here. Um, so uh, built, building a Facebook page, a business page, is, and is what we're particularly going to talk about, is it, it's like building a car engine. I have a friend that builds high-performance car engines. And one of the things that um, he says that's a difference between what he does and what the normal person who tries to build a, uh, a high-end engine is, is they go out to a junkyard and buy an engine block. And I'm not an, um, an engine person, so I'm going to say things the wrong way. And he goes, and then they put all these expensive pieces on top. And he said, but what he does, he buys that engine block and he polishes it and does all these things to make it high performance. So just like the life insurance combination or uh, conversation where you need a great foundation, the same applies to Facebook. So, so Facebook, um, the way it all works, everything that Facebook looks at is from your personal page. So to do anything on Facebook, you have to have a personal page. And, and I'm going to point out a couple of things as we go along here. So uh, there's, a, there's a term in Facebook's world that not many people know, and it's called edge rank. And edge rank is kind of like an, uh, an SEO score would be with um, – a web page or you know how you show up on Google and things like that which are other classes that we're going to we're going to bring to bear here in the in the near future but edge rank is how it plays out and and this guy is a marketer and he has a high edge rank I know this guy pretty well he's from San Diego um, this post has been on for 17 hours this post has been on for 20 hours this is a sponsored post that so gets driven to the top of the page but here's a guy that posted he's a police officer friend of mine and he posted one hour ago now, I, the way I used to think, I mean, on the surface, that you would think that, well, he just posted an hour ago. He should be way above these guys. But the truth of the matter is, is these people do things to enhance their edge rank so that they stay at the top of the feed. They're actually – what they're so good at their edge rank, they're coming in above paid ads. So – um, you know that that's important. So as we as we go forward, we need to have a good edge rank. So how do we do that? You know, um, the first thing is is just be on Facebook, have this page, um, participate, like people, comment, things like that. Um, just be active. That's one way. The second way is is how you make a post. So when you create a post, you always now this is on. We're still on your personal page. We've not moved over to the business page side yet. Um, you always want to mention somebody when you when you do it. So like my wife, um, she's not showing up here. Let's see, maybe we can we'll do tag friends. Just as long as you're so as you um, uh, put somebody into the post, you can put several people. And good morning, because she's just in the other room now, and she knows that I'm online, so she won't come in. Um, but when you're doing a post, as long as you tag somebody, that improves your edge rank. If you tag more people, there's no evidence at this time that shows that it helps to tag more. But you definitely want to put a tag on. You want to tag somebody to a post. So like John, the my police officer friend, let's see if he's listened. He's a, also a, a realtor and a mortgage banker. But you'll see on his post, look, do, you, do you see anybody's name? He's not tagged anybody in the post. Um, that 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 hurts his edge rank. I've talked to him about that, but because um, he's like I say he's in the he's in the mortgage business too, so that's one way to do edge, uh, to improve your edge rank. The other one is called time on site. So I, I've had this Billy Jean marketing thing here on my page probably you know while we were waiting to kick off and now so that means my I Facebook knows that this ad is on my page. And the longer that this ad is on my page, the longer I am on site. So time on site. So so how do you do that? Great images, 
videos, things like that. And some other things that you might have seen in the past have been, if, if you've seen those weird math equations, you know, 10 times 2 minus 3 plus 5 equals question mark. And if you can answer this, you're a genius. Now, now some people may enjoy those. I get my head hurts when I, when I do them. But the reason people actually put those out there is because of time on site. They get you to stay on the site. Or they'll have an image that you got to stare at for a long time to get. Again, time on site. Another way is um, there'll be a page with a bunch of ones. And if you can find the L, you're the you're, uh, smartest person in the world. And you'll, people will sit there and they'll let that ad stay on the front of their page. And um, again, all ways to improve your edge rank. So th those are basic functions that you're going to want to do on your personal page that that improve your edge rank. And that's right now, Facebook, if, if you get into a conversation with them, th those are the methods that, that they'll tell you they're a lot less cryptic than you might be like working with, with Google or something. Uh, another thing that's real important with Facebook, now you'll see I have 2,161, um, that's likes. Um, I have about 4,000 friends, I think. I was at, and I honestly, I'm missing where that's at right now. You can have up to 5,000 friends on your Facebook page. Now, what I would recommend is have 5,000 friends. Um, I don't mean take all comers. I, I'm, I'm not, not around that. But if I were out searching for people that are seniors to market to, I would have them on my personal page. And, and, I'll, and I'll show you why that matters in a little bit. But invite people. You know, uh, you're, you're sitting around doing nothing. Most, most of the activity done on Facebook is done on mobile. So we're not really seeing what it looks like here that, you know, the mobile would just really just be the feed. Um, so, you know, do, do things like that. You know, invite the type of people that you want to do business with. Um, the other thing that's really neat about your personal page on Facebook is, and I, I had them this morning, and I'm sorry, I clicked them off, but it tells you whose birthday it is. And it's nice to say happy birthday to people, for first of all. But the other thing is if you're paying attention and you know a little bit about the people and just you see it's a birthday, click to find out which birthday it is. If it was their 65th birthday or 64th birthday, do you think that's a great time to call? I mean, I would definitely want to leave them a message. So it's, it's, it's a nice place to prospect. Now, talking about posting on Facebook, on your personal page, I know that the, the topics of po politics and religion are, are taboo. Personally, I think they belong on Facebook. I mean, if you want to say something like that, that's personally okay. Uh, to me, that's okay. If you want to post pictures of your dogs, your cats, your, your, your house, whatever, your family, whatever you feel comfortable with, post on your personal page. Never try to sell on your personal page. Never ask somebody if they need help with Medicare on your personal page, unless you're clicking into somebody's name and sending them a personal message. This is not the place to advertise, okay? If we're going to advertise, we're going to do that from a business page. So, so this, is, this is the warm and fuzzy place or the place where you get into the discussion about um, COVID-19 or you – you know, you have a political banter with somebody or you, you know, you just whatever. It's just personal. Keep your business off this page. And, and I know that seems like counterintuitive, but with what I'm going to show you, um, you'll see why that's important. That plus 5,000 people. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to create a page. And I want you to do it, but I don't want you to do it. <laughs> and that sounds like what? What are you talking about? The first thing I want you to do is get 5,000 friends. And the reason is when we go to a business page, the only people on a business page that see the posts, the organic posts, so the posts that you're not paying for, the only people that um, see that post are the ones that are on your business page. So if you have 100 people on your business page, and you, sorry, it's my aunt saying good morning now. I'll start at all that crap. Um, the uh, the only people that see it, if, if you have 100 people and you make a post to your business page and you don't put any money behind it, the only people that see it are the 100 people on your page. So there's a way that with Facebook, let's say you have 5,000 friends and you're going to create a page, 
you can create the page with your friends. So you tell Facebook, I want to migrate over and, and, and create my business page, but I want to bring all my friends with me. So now you have 5,000 friends on your business page as well. So, and that's real easy to do. Just put migrate uh, page, Google migrate page, or in Facebook's up here in their, in, their, in their help area, you can ask the same question, and they'll literally tell you how to do it. If you've already created a page, you can replace it with a new page. And again, there's directions inside Facebook on how to do that. But so to create a business page, you literally cl click here on the create button, and we're going to create a page. Okay. So is it a business or a brand? Is it a, I mean, this is pretty much, it would seem as this is great to do, but, you know, I mean, pretty not great to do, but e easy to understand. Well, I'm a business and I'm a brand or am I a community or a public figure? If I'm going to, the advice I'm going to give you, if you have a brick and mortar location, then you're a business or brand. If you don't, you're a community or public figure. The reason being is if you put a business or a brand, they're going to want a physical address, and that physical address cannot be hidden. As a community or public figure, you don't need that um, address put on there. So more often than not, a lot of us, especially right now, we're all working out of our house. But in the real world, when, when all this gets um, cleared up as it will, um, do you have an office that people can come to? Yes, then you're a business or brand. Don't you? Do you work out of your house like a lot of people do? You're a community or public figure. That's the that's kind of the difference in the two. So I'm going to do it as a community public figure, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say we're gonna do um, insurance pros. I'm just making this up as I go, and categories in and it they will only allow you certain categories. So um, so you have to kind of find the right one, let's see, and you can always uh, default to something that they're so like an entrepreneur or whatever. Now over here you would be able to choose an insurance agent um, under the business or a brand. The, the reality is is that that's not a search, this is not a search type of business. So people typically don't go to the search thing and type in insurance salesman or Medicare or things like that. And you can't keyword your way into that search. So um, in, during the social channels, the social channels are all about, and when I say social channels, I mean like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, things like that. Um, those channels are more about being social and, and they're people that are literally doing things that are social. I mean, they're talking about like you know, everybody's saying good morning to me now that I did that. So, um, but over here, you know, we're we're not worried. I'm not. I'm not worried. I guess that's what I'm saying is it's not worth worrying about. Um, now, if, once we get into the Google, words matter a lot. So, and we're gonna do. We have a cut. We have a Google guide that's gonna be speaking here uh, later this month. So, or yeah, later this. I'm not sure when. So, up here, you just upload a prof upload a profile picture. Um, I'm not. I don't have any pictures to use, so I'm not gonna do that. But um, the, the profile picture you will see, let me see if I can upload a profile picture just so we can see what it does. Um, pictures, uh, camera roll, let's see, I'm trying to find a, te uh, I'll just put mine on there. So, just my old house doesn't matter but you can here you can create positive imagery obviously you want to pick the right thing for your business um, I had my old page before and, and what has happened here so you'll see this is the, the first picture but the cover photo was the wrong size so it as you can see it's um, a landscape picture and you'll have to get a landscape picture to put in there but that's really how easy it is to to create um, the page to get it started then you go through the edit page info right here and you literally work your way down and start filling in the blanks so um, you know description um, Medicare superstar I, I like words that maybe not everybody else uses um, that 
Medicare Superstar, my mission is to help every senior. I'm not advi I, 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 saying these are the words to say. I'm just making making conversation here. And each box you do, you have to put save changes as you go. You can put your phone number in here. You don't have to. Um, if you don't want it on your Facebook on um, on your business Facebook page, you just click that you don't have it. If you don't have a website, another thing that Messer provides our agents, we provide you with a website um, for if you qualify for one, an email address if you have an email address. If you don't, click that. Put the save the changes in. Now, what I would do here, if you don't want to put your address on it because you're working out of your house, I would just put the city. So I'm in Dayton, Ohio, a little bit away from Mint Hill. And uh, there's a zip code. And then it's kind of a customers visit my business at my street address. So that's going to hide my address. There you go. Um, service areas. So you could put, I, this is going to be cities as well. Dayton, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio. Oops. Um, and save changes. Um, impress them. That is a, that is actually something that's used in the EU, and it's it's required on um, Facebook pages. Um, you can just tell a little bit more about yourself, but when you do put something in there, it shows up on your page as impress them, and nobody knows what that means. So um, it's just another thing. If you leave it blank, it shouldn't show up. Um, if you have a privacy policy, for instance, on your web page, um, you would just put that link right there. And then, and then you're really done. I mean, you've built your your Facebook page. So let's go back here to the page. Here's oh, there's my picture did show up. Um, so now there's a there's a couple of ways. Here's one thing you can do is you can actually go and invite each and every one of your friends. Um, but that's up to them to to do it. So in other words, if you um, if you invite them, they can not follow you. If you do the migration over that I was talking about earlier, they're automatically going to be friends on your page. So let's say I have this page, I'm ready to go, and um, now I want to advertise. Okay, there's ways to do paid ads, and that's something that we're going to co um, cover in the, um, I never thought I'd get that much interaction out of just writing good morning. That's really pretty cool. Um, so let's say I want to run an ad. Um, that's something that we're, a paid ad, that's something we're going to cover in a later, it's a little bit more advanced class. Um, and that, and I believe that's something that's going to be for Messer agents only. So again, that's another reason, another value that we provide at Messer. That's a pretty deep dive into ads manager and creating ads and call to actions and stories that make people convert. Um, but the other way to do it is organically. So um, you can create a business post, Medicare rules, whatever it's going to be. And then you post that to your page. Now, what's the? How, how is that going to help anybody? It's not, unless you have thousands of followers on your page. But what you can do is you can go to that post when it shows up. There it is. It's not it yet either. Where's it at? Come on. It's not showing up yet. Well, we'll pretend this was that post that I just made. You take this post and you share it. You click your personal page right here, and then you share it to your personal page. So I just took an ad from a business page, and I shared it to my personal page. Wait a minute, Mike. You said don't do any um, ads or don't don't mention business on my page. I said don't make posts about business on your page. But it's perfectly okay to go ahead and share from a business page to your personal page. What does that effectively do? It takes this, or now I don't have an audience yet, unless you copied your audience over, and I still do it, even if it's something that and I have a huge audience on a business page, I will still post it to my personal page because I want more reach, and that's the way that these things can get seen by more people. So share it over to your personal page. Hey, here's a personal, here's a post by Mike, and it doesn't show up as an ad. So let's go back to my personal page. I didn't put it on here. Um, but so like Billy Jean, this he he's a marketer that's online a lot, and and he has such a great edge rank. He doesn't have to run paid ads, but you see how this says sponsored. This means Brian Moran, whoever he is, I don't really know, 
has been he he paid for that placement. It's just like the top three spots in Google. People understand that those are ads that those are paid for. Um, they're less likely to click on them. I think there's a it, and this is getting into Google, but I would think this is a good uh, uh, rate across the top that only seven percent of the time do people click on those paid ads on Google. Now, I would think it's kind of similar here. And 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 I, and I want you to kind of take into context how people are using Facebook. So let's say I'm scrolling through here and I'm looking for stories about you know how my friends are doing and um, or about fuzzy kitty cats and uh, climbing up walls and falling down. All the Tiger King, that's a new big thing. So um, and then all of a sudden somebody runs an ad and they have to do what's called in my mind pattern interrupt. So they got to break my pattern of thought, break my train of thought that I'm thinking and I'm looking at, introduce a problem, tell me why they're the solution to the problem, and then ask me to let them solve the problem. I've never met them before in my life, and if you go back to the statistics that we were talking about before, people need to see and hear from you five times. Half the, half the time they need to see and hear from you five times before they decide to work with you. It makes sense to let your business post be on this on your personal page so that people can see them. And it's every time, even if they don't stop on it, people will remember seeing something. How many times have you just like, you know, I know I've seen that somewhere. So that's kind of the concept behind that. Get it out in front of the people that know, you know, love and trust. And now there's a, there was an interesting uh, article in uh, HubSpot, which is a CRM, puts out a, uh, a really good, uh, they do a really good blog and um, they were talking about how people um, make buying decisions and why people don't sell to their warm market. 90% of the people, this is amazing to me, 90% of the people that you know, love, and trust, that know, love, and trust you would do business with you if they only, A, knew what you did, B, knew that you were accepting new customers, and C, knew how to contact you. Now, does that sound silly? The people that I know, love, and trust don't know what I do. They don't, they don't know that I need new customers, and they don't know how to contact me. The people that you know, love, and trust don't want to interrupt you. They, 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 your time is valuable. They understand that. They, they don't really think about you that way. They're, you're a friend. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna affect Mike's time. You know, Brian's a busy guy. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna bother Brian. And if I do, I've got his personal cell phone number, but I really don't wanna call him on his personal cell phone number. He may not like that. I mean, people think because they that way because they care about you. But if you go ahead and you tell them and you show them, and, and in this in this particular case, we're, we're doing it on Facebook. Hey, this is what I do. Hey, here's some valuable content. Not asking them to buy, just providing value to your warm market because you should have your warm market on here. Um, th there's a better chance that they're going to um, do business with you. The interesting part about the HubSpot article was the next step that they took, that 80% of those people would be willing to refer you, sorry about the good morning things, 80% um, of the people that you know, love, and trust will be willing to refer you if they only knew what you did, um, knew that you were accepting new clients, and knew how to put people in contact with you. Are you seeing a theme? <laughs> you know, so, so we need to let people know what we do in a nice, friendly way, and here's one nice, friendly way, working with Facebook coming from a business page, posting to your personal page, and getting the ads to the people that you know, love, and trust. That's how we start. Now, the way to take it to the next level, we can start running ads and doing things like that. Again, that's going to be at a, at a, more, a more advanced class, and um, uh, that, that's for uh, Messer agents only. So, again, I, ho I hope that's really all I have for you today. I hope this provided some value on working with Facebook and um, seeing how to do things. And I think the most important thing is that, that I had to learn was the trying to avoid the desire to, to post a sale, I, something I have the insurance for sale, short, short version, on my personal Facebook page. But just be dutiful enough to go back to your business page, post it, and then share it back. And then that's okay. It's okay that so I know, for instance, Billy Jean and that Sarah, or Rachel Lee. She's a these are marketing people. If, if I click, I already know that's what they do. So I'm not offended by them being on my page because I I, I know them and I know what they do. So um, 
you know, it just takes people to a to a new place, a new understanding, and it's a it's a gentle push on your friends and family instead of smacking them in the face with an ad every time they open up their Facebook. So that's all I've really got for you guys today. Um, uh, Brian, any questions or? Yeah, Mike, you you know we have a ton of questions, <laughs> but that was that was excellent. I mean, I mean, I know you just kind of dipped your toe in it, but that was a ton of great information, um, a lot that I didn't know. And I'm sure that a lot of folks here just learned a lot as far as, you know, what they need to do, not just to build their page, but to migrate and things like that. So let's go through, let's go through some of these questions. Um, and we will start with Steve. So Steve asks, can you have a personal page? It's really just personal and tie a different personal page to have a business page. And what he's looking for, he just wants Facebook for family and friends. Did that so make sense? You, you can. It, mm -hmm. it it does, and I and I understand the the you know the anonymity part of this. Um, the, just because you have a business page, the so people that go to your business page will not have any access to your personal page unless you post stuff over there from your personal page. So you can do that. I, I think that just the difficulty in managing two personal pages, um, but I can see that do that like where you have one page where maybe you have just your close fa family and friends, and then you have another page where you have you know just thousands of people that you're just interacting with. Um, yeah, sure, you can do that, and then run the business page off of it. You will have to use a separate email address. Um, that's the only thing. Just need. They'll, they'll want a different email address. You, you actually, you notice I have multiple pages here. It actually right. ties. I mean, it, it, it's in the same interface, so it's not too hard to toggle back and forth. Except like we saw this morning when you miss when you forget your passwords, like I did. So. Okay, good. Does that answer good. your question, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, Paul actually has a, a few different questions. Um, he, he says he's concerned about going into a rabbit hole. How much time do you recommend? Per day, as far as uh, Facebook is concerned, you know, I I wouldn't devote a lot of time to it. Um, you know, that sounds terrible. Other once you've built the pages, um, you can just, I mean, a, a couple minutes a day, um, crafting a post and sharing it. That's really all you have to do. Um, there's also tools out there. Um, you know, one that comes to mind is Hootsuite that basically you can do a month's worth of posts on on the platform and it will just go ahead and schedule them. Uh, you know, I, I just look at it as, um, you know, in those times where you're sitting down doing nothing, just grab your phone, make a post, share it to your page. It really, if, if you spent five minutes on it a day, that would be, oh, that would probably be okay once you've set the page up. Setting the page up may take a little more time. So would you say that, um, or, or if you can kind of elaborate, does more posts help your edge rank? Consistently posting, so it helps your edge rank. So, and again, remember, edge rank is always done on the personal page, this page right here. So, oh, I got you. you know, posting, posting, you know, they're going to tell you somebody that posts daily um, is going to have a higher edge rank than somebody who posts weekly. Now, that's personal posts. So, like I just did the good, good morning post. You know, I try to do something every day on Facebook, and and posting doesn't have to be your post. So you can just simply go onto your Facebook, and I and I could just you know take take a uh, uh, take like go down here, go down to John stuff like so find it, um, or I could just take this one and share it. I mean, me sharing that post that, that's a great thing, but um, what you want to do, you still want to practice. Let's see if I can get here. So you still want to practice tagging somebody in the post. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So let's see here. Let me, let me put a guy on here. Just I'll just put John Clark because he's kind of weird. He likes these things. Um, so as as long as you're posting, and I'm just going to cancel out of it. It doesn't look like it wants to work right now. Um, as long as you're posting and adding a name, I mean, you can share and add a name. You can like. You can comment. I mean, there's there's any way to to be active. You don't have to create your own post on your personal page. But now I would want you to be the person that's creating the posts on your business page. And 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 a quick way to do that. So um, 
it, when we work with Google, this is going to be different. But in Facebook, Facebook doesn't mind you using other people's information. So you could go, maybe you see a, a post on Messer's page, and you're like, yeah, that's pretty good information. I want to share that. Sh share that to your business page or copy it to your business page and then share that. There's nothing wrong with that. Fa Facebook doesn't doesn't grade content. In other words, they don't say this post is good or this post is better or this post has been copied. They don't really care. So that doesn't help or hurt you either way. But I think it helps you be, because you can you can go to Forbes and grab an article, or you can go to you know to go to a news channel and grab an article. Um, I just would try to make sure that whatever you post on your business page is from a reliable source, some place that you trust. Right. Okay, next question is, would you recommend having a website before initiating a Facebook page? You know, I, I asked the question at a, at, a, at a marketing event that was held in Cincinnati, and, you know, because we all, we all work on limited budgets, and, yes, I would do a Facebook page. I would do a Google My Business page and a Facebook page before I ever bought a website. Um, now websites are pretty easy, and actually there's a there's a couple out there that if you build a Facebook business page, it will actually work. It will build the website for you. Some of these, I mean, there's different companies out there, so you don't have to get real deep into building a website. But that would probably be one of the last things I did. I would do this and I Google my business first. Okay, good, good. Um, Catherine asks, how do you do the migration? So uh, I guess she, she's probably talking about when you were talking about uh, building the your business page and then pulling your friends over. Yeah, so I just – this is uh, – you can find it here. There's videos on doing it, Facebook page migration. And and this is right here is the one I use, migrate uh, from a Facebook post. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I will copy this URL. And can I, is there a place I can put that, Brian? Um, no, but it's something, so that's that's something you want to, uh, you want me to share with folks? Yeah, yeah. But or, again, you saw how I did that. I literally just yeah. went to Facebook page migration, and, and the ones, there's plenty of them on here, but I would only choose the ones that say Facebook. Um I don't know. I don't know Banana Desk, so um, I don't know some of these play short stack. You know, choose Facebooks because what can happen? Um, Facebook is a lot like Google; they'll shut you down, and uh, so you don't want to do things that are against their rules. So that's why anytime I use their, any anytime I do anything, I go through Facebook to get direction on how to do it. Okay, I'll include that in the uh, in the email that I send out. Okay. All right. A couple more questions here. One second. All right. Um, we already have a business page with about 500 followers. How do I migrate the page to include all my friends? I think you just went over that. Yeah, I, I would go to the same link and look at it because sometimes what you actually have to do is um, Facebook doesn't doesn't allow I don't, I don't think in your case they're gonna lie 500 is a good amount of followers and you can still by having you know having your personal page and and interacting on there working on your edge rank you can still get those posts over to your personal page really easy I I, I would check this post to see what Facebook says about it because I'm not sure I that's why I said to, if you haven't built one yet to wait until you've got enough followers on your personal page um, but mm -hmm. check with this uh, Facebook migration rules because they may allow it and they may not, and they may change their mind anyway. So um, right. the rules are always changing. Yeah. And next question is from Mark. How do you attract potential clients to get to 5,000? So, I, I mean, you can actually just go to places that, so like I, I would go to ARP's page. <laughs> that sounds stupid, but places where you might find seniors following. Um, and so like right here, uh, our membership healthcare travel and insurance, and then you find people that follow it. So 
or people that are commenting on it. So it might just simply go to anybody that's commenting on it and find out a little bit. I don't want to invite a bunch of agents. So he's self-employed. That kind of looks like he might be an agent. Um, let's see if we can. That's what I would do. I just literally would go to places. If you don't know people that are already, um, that's the United States Census. We don't want that. Um, but one way to do it, I'm not a, a member of this group, and that's why they're not showing it to me. You join the group, and then once you're in the group, you'll see who the members are. Um, yeah, there we go. So here's people that are on the group, and you could literally just go, and you don't even have to go to their page. I believe they have. Yeah, so, so they, he just joined, but you can just click add a friend, um, add a friend. And just, you know, go, just like you think about how you would go out and market maybe to a community center um, or something like that, just find places like that. And, and, you know, we're in the world where that is very small and people are understanding how small it is now. I mean, you can do business. I mean, Brian's in Mint Hill, North Carolina. I'm in Lebanon, Ohio. And, and, you know, I think I saw somebody from Missouri was on here. So, I mean, the world is really small. You can do business across the United States. It's just a matter of having different licenses. And, and with being able to enroll online like we can with our enrollment tools, um, you know, you can sell anywhere you want. Um, that being said, I think people feel a little bit more comfortable with even if they are enrolling online or on the phone with people that are close to them. So I would be, you know, join those organizations that are close to you and that way i mean if there's a chance to go there and do something even uh, that maybe the maybe like let's say the lebanon community senior community center i join there and i start making some posts and people see that and they decide hey this is a medicare expert they might invite me to come over and, and do work i mean it's not what your goal is but it, it's kind of an extra bonus for being part of a group posting valid or, or valuable content and being right. being active right right that's that's good information um next question is how much information would you say is good to have on your page and when it comes to medicare where do you get the information that you are allowed to post so i mean you're always safe with with the, the big ones and i'm not a compliance person and uh, you can we have a compliance uh, shelly medford if you have questions about that the way I've always, and, and it's kind of interesting this year, if you, if you remember the difficult AHIP, how it was, but it did cover um, marketing on Facebook. And my my take on it was, and this is to, I have to simple everything down a little bit. Um, if, if you're educational in content, so like the Medicare 101, the, um, you know, so basically think about your marketing events. If it's going to be a marketing event, where you're where you're selling a brand name, um, like Anthem's zero copay, twenty five dollar this whatever, that's probably not allowed. Um, but if you're just providing basic Medicare content, so like right now some companies are offering SEPs, you know that's you're not really marketing a plan. You're just providing information, and as long as that information comes from a source like maybe you get something from Anthem's page or Aetna's page or Humana's page or CMS or, or HHS or one of those places, I don't think you're going to have a problem because guess who got that approved already? Uh, Anthem did, Aetna did, Humana right. did because they right. didn't put it out there if it wasn't going to be compliant. I wouldn't go to Joe's Medicare shop and, and pull one of his ads, but and, and we'll, we'll see how to uh, – the interesting thing about one of the next classes – when we learn how to run ads, I'll show you how to go into people that are doing it and doing well and just steal their ads. So, But that doesn't mean we want to do things that are going to get us in compliance trouble. But, again, that's something that, that uh, Messer agents already have access to. If, if you didn't know that, we have our own compliance person, Shelly Medford. Just call her at the office and, uh, and, and or email her and ask her those kinds of questions. Excellent. And just a couple more here, and, and then we'll, we'll let you go. Um, so Steve says, seems like finding content to post would be time consuming. I see services that offer content. Are there any industry specific services that you recommend? Uh, there's a couple of them out there. I, I mean, I, I would, I, I'm, I'm going to kind of push back on the, um, how hard it is to find content. Um, you know, most of the carriers have in their back offices 
like Aetna has a, a marketing center that you can use, but you can literally just go to, to their pages and find things and um, or like just go to medicare.gov and just look up an article. It doesn't have to be life changing, but there's already plenty of content out there. That being said, I'm trying to think of a, a content provider that there's, uh, I just have never done that. Um, there was a guy that did, I can't think of his name. Um, but I would just, this is where I would go and find, you know, so here's Medicare and you preventing Medicare fraud. This is click share, copy the, copy the link, go back to your Facebook page. Now, this is how to share a video, but, um, Yeah, so that, I I I would lean away from spending money. Why is it not wanting to go back? It's gotta go way back. So and then tag friends. Come on. Um, let me go with Mama here. Yeah, she's not. I'll just send it to this lady. She won't really have any idea why I sent it to her. So that's what I would do. I mean, you can find services that do it. Um, that actually will turn into a video eventually. That just like a like an image here. Um, but again, I don't know of any specifically. I've seen them in, and they range in around forty or fifty bucks a month. Um, and they're going to post you know once a week to it. But um, you know, the other thing that going out and getting your own content, just, you know, researching different pages, it, it, it's an educational opportunity. I mean, hey, I'm spending five minutes, ten minutes, and I would probably look a little deeper to find something, but um, it gives you the opportunity to maybe find something out that you didn't know. That happened to me this year. I was posting something, and I, I didn't realize there was an, a, a Part D special enrollment period. And I've been doing this for ten years and didn't realize it. Right. But, um, I'm like, wow, that's that, that's kind of great. So, um yeah, so that really didn't answer the question, but I, I just lean towards doing it yourself. Yeah, no, no, you definitely did answer the question. And, and you know, sometimes just looking for content, like you said, you'll find something that you didn't even know. Um, and someone else will probably find value in it. So, Mike, I, I appreciate you taking the time today um, to to go through this information. Um, you know, for those of you who who think you may have missed anything, we actually will be posting this video in our learning center. Uh, so you'll be able to listen to it again. Now there will be a, a Facebook 201, but that will be exclusive to Messer agents. Um, so if you are at this time, if you are not a Messer agent, this is gonna be a good time to go ahead, sign up, talk to one of our marketers, talk to Mike, um, so you can get the information, uh, so you can get uh, set up. Uh, we have several, pretty much whatever you're selling, whether it's life, Medicare Advantage, MedSup, disability, long-term care, we have the, the top carriers in any of those uh, fields. So once again, I want to thank um, you, Mike, for taking your time today to go through this. And I want to thank everyone for taking time out of your day. Hopefully you did learn something new that you'll be able to implement in your business. Um, if you are not currently, uh, if you're not currently set up with Messer Financial Group, if you're not an agent with us, definitely give us a call. If you have questions, uh, you can actually reach out to our marketing department at 866-568-9649, extension 7819. Uh, but if you are a Messer agent and you have questions, if you are looking to get uh, appointed with different carriers, you can go into your Sure LC profile, or you can contact Producer Support Department at 866-568-9649, extension 7813, or you can email them at Producer Support at MesserFinancial.com. Also, take a few moments to check our events calendar out at uh, www.MesserFinancial.com. We will be having webinar workshops scheduled throughout the year with valuable information. Once again, Mike, thank you. And for everyone who joined us, thank you so much. And all of you take care of yourselves and take care of everyone around you. Have a great day.